All right, guys, this is Ross the Fig Boss. I thought in today's video, I would show you guys a method of growing your fig trees, a technique that you can use on your fig trees that are in the ground that we can increase our production by over 100%. 100%, I mean, that's just insane, right? How could this be true? Someone's gonna be so skeptical in this video. This isn't clickbait. So I'm gonna very easily show you guys in this video, hopefully as clearly as I can. This is a little difficult to explain, but now I'm gonna show you guys a really good technique. It's actually involving summer pruning and involving pinching that we're gonna change the hormones in the tree. We're gonna intervene at some point of your season. You guys can do this. I'm gonna do this probably here sometime in June, probably around June 15th or maybe June 1st. Depending on where you guys live, you can adjust that date. For some of you guys out in California, maybe you could do this in May. Maybe some of you guys can even do this as early as April, which would be fantastic. But production is really easily defined as having more fruiting branches in a given area. So if we can have more of these branches, these new growths that come out of the tree that forms our main crop, because the main crop forms on new growth, we're gonna have more fruits in a given area, therefore having a more productive tree. Now, we've talked a lot about this in the past, but to even form the fruit buds on these branches, to form the, the main crop, we need an appropriate amount of light. So the key is here, it's having not necessarily the most fruiting branches in a given area, but it's the most fruiting branches you could possibly have in a given area, given the appropriate amount of light to actually form those fruit buds. So if you don't have the light, this isn't really gonna work. If your branches are too dense, too close together, this isn't gonna work. So as an example here, let's see exactly how I'm gonna do this. It's something called rivers pruning. We've talked actually a lot about this, a little bit on uh, different you know, videos I've done. We've done even a video just on this quite recently, uh, the beginning of this season. We have been doing this technique, believe it or not, um, for at least four years of growing figs. So I've done this in various uh, ways, especially by using the greenhouse where I have container fig trees in the greenhouse. I pinch them at an early date and then they continue to grow because after pinching, after doing our summer pruning, which is very simply as, it's as simple as just removing the apical bud. So if I come in here guys and I show you what this means exactly, pinching is very simply as just removing this apical bud. So you can see this is where the growth point is on the different branches. If I remove this one here, you can see there's sap flow that comes out of the branch, and this changes the hormones in that particular branch. And if you do it to most of the tree, you then change the hormones across the board in the tree. So it's a very interesting way to actually form the fruits. That's one technique, that's one use of this technique. Um, and you can also, by the way, have it form new branches, new fruiting branches. So you can see as an example, this is a branch over here that I pinched. You can see the remainder of it, this leftover piece that's now dead. Here's where that scar is of where I pinched. And here is the many fruiting branches that have come out of the tree at these locations um, in response to that change in the hormones, right? There is no more apical dominance. The auxins are removed. The tree is now doing its own thing to then grow in different locations, but also fruit along the branches. So this tree we're gonna look at today is called LSU Huye. It's very good in a low light condition. And you can see all the way down here at the base, the fruits are ripening. Early in the season, this tree was only about six inches off the ground. And I cut all the branches back that far. And then I, you can see all the fruits down here that have formed. And if I count the number of fruits on this tree, just on this one branch that started out at six inches above the ground, there is 14 fruits. So that's pretty good. That's pretty impressive in my length of the season. And then we came in here sometime around, actually July 1st, July 15th, just like we talked about over here with this tree, is we removed the apical bud and it all came out as all these new shoots. Now, what we did is we formed the fruits potentially down here that maybe were a little bit slower, um, that maybe, uh, you know, there's some debate as to whether or not pinching speeds up the ripening process. Um, but, you know, let's say as an example, let's just hypothetically state 
that instead of pinching these trees and all these trees I did over here, by the way, behind me, um, we pinched them roughly the end of my season. So July 1st, July 15th, that's the date in which if we don't see these fruits on the trees by that date or very shortly after that date, we ain't gonna get them to ripen. The, the length of our season is just not long enough. We have a frost that's gonna come in and it's gonna wipe out these trees. So these fruits need to be there. And that last pinching date really is for these in-ground trees about July 15th. So if I come in here around July 15th, form these new fruiting branches, and then on these new fruiting branches that you see here, we have a lot more fruiting branches in a given area, um, and we form fruits on those branches, well, they're just not gonna ripen in time, unfortunately. I don't have long enough season. But that's the idea, is that we're pinching off the apical bud here of this particular branch, or all the branches on your tree. You can do this on selective branches, you can do this on all of them, however you wanna do it. This will form the fruits along the branches here, potentially even speed up that process, and then we're gonna have all these new shoots that come out with the help of food and water. But you have to have that water, you have to have some food if you're missing some nutrients, especially that nitrogen, but water is absolutely critical. My soil here is very heavy clay. We have a lot of moisture. Um, it just rained like four inches in the last week, over four inches probably. So it's really critical to have that water because water is the on or off switch of the growth. So even if we remove the dominance, we remove the apical bud like I showed you guys, there's no guarantee that it's gonna grow. But if you have the water, it is gonna grow. If you have a drier soil, it's not gonna grow. So that's really critical there. If you wanna have this work, let these new branches grow, and then on these new branches, you're gonna actually see a lot more fruits that ripen later in the season. And I could come in here even today if I wanted to, remove the apical bud, force these branches into fruiting, and have, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about seven new fruits on just this one branch. But guess what? There's four of them. So it's not just seven fruiting fruits, it's actually seven times four, it's 28 fruits. So I have taken this one branch that had, by the way, only 14 fruits on it in this entire length of my season that you could possibly form the fruits in, and then I just multiply that basically by two. I just increased my production by an crazy amount. But let's be a little bit more realistic. Let's use a hypothetical situation here and try to really estimate based on what I know how exactly much more production you would get. And um, I would say, because what I'm gonna do next year is I'm gonna perform this technique on all the in-ground trees at a much earlier date. July 1st, July 15th is just too late uh, to really see a big benefit of this increased production. So what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna come in here, not July 1st, but probably around June 1st, maybe even June 15th, and about two weeks to four weeks later, we're gonna have all this new growth that's formed. It's gonna take roughly about a month. So if I did this uh, June 1st, I'm gonna come in here again and see all these branches that have formed their fruits on July 1st, and then I'm gonna pinch them again and force them into fruiting. So by doing that, we essentially have more fruits, right? So hypothetically, let's say, instead of coming in here, I have 14 fruits by July 1st, July 15th. If I came in here around June 1st, and if I looked at videos, guys, I could go back and look at some videos and see where my trees were at, how progressed they were at around June 1st or even June 15th, I would argue they're probably down here about at my waist so I'm gonna miss about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's just say we're gonna miss about seven fruits. So about half of the production is now gone um, that I would have otherwise had. So if I came in here, pinched off the tip, the tree now looks like this rather than this section here. How do I explain this to you guys? So if I came in here, remove the tip roughly around this location here on the tree, all these fruits above that would just not exist, right? Hypothetically, they would not exist. So that's about seven fruits, let's say. Half of the fruits are gone. Then about a month later, the tree, instead of producing seven fruits like it would have and like it did, it would instead 
produce these new fruiting branches. And probably on average, you're gonna get about three really strong fruiting branches like this. And you can see this on all my trees, guys. It's not just, <laughs> it's not just the one tree or the one branch. They all form a lot of these fruiting branches. And uh, when you have these fruiting branches then form, depending on how much they grow and how much light they receive, you're gonna get more fruits. So instead of having you know, seven fruits, I'm now getting three fruiting branches with, as I said, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven new fruit buds just on this one branch. Multiply that by three, you're now looking at 21 fruits versus seven fruits. So you see where I'm getting this 100%, right? That's actually three times the production is 300%. So I actually estimate, I think a better estimate is actually 140 to 150%. I've come in here and um, have looked at this at different, an earlier time of the season, by the way, and have more accurately, I think, estimated this rather than 300%. I think it's more along the lines of 100 to 150%. So if you're losing about 10 fruits on your tree, you should be seeing about um, you know, 100 to 150% more production than you would have if you just let the tree continue to grow. Um, so that's interesting. And by the way, there is a, yeah, I think that's more accurate. I think that is definitely more accurate because there's a missing piece of this that I actually forgot to mention to you guys, but we're just really getting in the weeds there at that point. So one of the things here in my hand is actually a clothespin. I, I would have liked to have had a wooden one just to show you guys a good demonstration, but um, you know everyone has access to the wooden clothespins. But essentially what you can do is this is a good, good tip and trick for people is that when these new branches form, I don't even know how exactly to do this, but when these new branches form on the tree, you could very easily put a clothespin on here and force the branches away from each other. So you're then essentially bending these branches away, giving them access to more light. You're letting those fruit buds, you're giving them a higher chance of those fruit buds to form so that later when you come in here, as here, I'm gonna do this sometime around July 1st, I'm gonna remove the apical bud and all these fruit buds are gonna be there, present on the branches, and the pinching is only gonna help form the fruits speed up the, the process of forming those fruits. So there's a lot to this. This is a very advanced technique and there's so many things that I think kind of goes into this, but I tried to make it as short and simple as I possibly could. You know, it's very simply as just, instead of letting your trees grow and grow and grow all season, which is not a horrible thing, obviously, we can, uh, we can increase the production by very simply like here's a tree that just continued and continued to grow, right? Here's still the apical bud. The fruits are still forming, right? It's still growing and the fruits are still forming on the tree. So I have all these fruits that I've already ripened and all these fruits above it that will continue to ripen throughout the progression of the season. But if I remove this and say, all right, well actually, you know what? I'm gonna remove, hypothetically remove about, you know, a portion of these fruits that would have actually formed if I just let it kept growing by removing those fruits, I'm then encouraging, removing that apical bud, I'm encouraging the fruits to form, right? Lower down on the tree. And then I'm also encouraging the tree to actually put out these new fruiting branches, as you can see just all over the place on these trees. And then on these new fruiting branches, you should get the fruit buds present um, and they will then form fruits later down in the season. So you could use this as a way to time your crop you can use this as a way to produce earlier fruits that are forming down lower on the tree. And then you can form, or actually have just have the benefit of just producing more fruits in one season. I mean, isn't that the name of the game really? A lot of people who are commercial growers, this is what they want. They wanna have more fruits, they wanna have larger fruits so they can sell them and get more money from it, right? So anyway, there's a little talk there on rivers pruning, it's called. Check out the other videos we've done now on this topic. Here's so many branches, so many trees that after pinching them, you can see the fruits formed right there. And then of course they form all these new branches 
and on these new branches have those fruit buds present, assuming they get enough light. And then it's just very simply as just coming in here later in the season, removing this apical bud, and you're gonna get two crops of figs in one season. Amazing. Thank you guys. Check out our blog, figboss.com. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Take care. I'll catch you guys for the next one.